Today I thought we'd do something a little bit different and do a little bit of live coding. So we've covered doing some charting and graphing on the channel before, and I thought we could apply that to creating a small chart that just shows how many messages have been created each day inside of this chat room application. So uh, we'll start by adding the chart kick gem. We'll just go ahead and we'll screen this, bump up the font size, and then we'll run a bundle add chart kick to add the gem to our gem file. Now that that's been added, we're also going to want to run a bundle add for the group date gem, which will let us group our messages by the date they were created. There we go. And now we should be good to run a Rails S. And then we can uh, add the pins to our import map. So if we come over to our Explorer, let me minimize all this. Come into the, I think it's the config, and then there's an import map.rb. And then right in here, we'll just paste these in. So we're going to pin the chart kick uh, to chart kick.js. Then we're going to pin capital C chart dot bundle to the chart dot bundle dot js. You then go ahead and save this, and then we can come over to our explorer, and we're going to want to find our app our JavaScript and our application.js. And then here we're gonna to want to do a import for chart kick. And then we're also gonna to want to do a import for chart.bundle. And once that's done, we should be good to use our uh, charts in here. So let's go ahead and let's close the application, close the import map. This video is brought to you by learn.dnn.com. That's right. I'm bringing you this video. I have a course now. Go check it out. Link in the video description. All right, so the next thing we want to do is figure out how to group these messages. I'll just come in here and uh, I'll open up a console maybe. Or maybe let's do it over here in the actual terminal. It might be a bit easier to see. And I'll go ahead and run a Rails C. And then I'll do a message.all just to see how many we have. Looks like we have quite a few. So I'll say message.count. And we have about 96 messages. All right, so now what we can do is we can try to do a message dot, uh, maybe message dot group underscore by underscore day. And then we can group by the created underscore at and do a dot count. Here we can see when messages are created. You can see that fairly consistently, I only work on Fridays, which also tells you that I'm a little bit behind schedule most of the time because I don't do the work the rest of the week and then I have to do it all on Friday before I release the video. Uh, but this is really neat because it gives us a small data set to use here. And if we want to, we can even pass in a range where we can do a range from a time. So we could do like, uh, let's do one dot month dot ago and we want this to go to the time dot now, I think. And that will give us a range from July 22nd to June 22nd. So this is kind of what we want to use. So let's go ahead and grab this. I'll hit F11 to minimize this. Control D to exit out. Control L to clear. Rails S to start the server. We can come over to our Explorer. We can come into our models and our message.rb has a whole bunch of stuff in it. Uh, above the private, we'll just create another method. And we'll just set this to be def uh, messages this month. And then we can paste in what we had there. Let me full screen this with F11. I'm going to set this to be something like, I don't know, messages equal to the message that group by day. And then we can just return that. We can then come into our Explorer and we can come into our controllers <coughs> and we're going to want to come into our rooms controller where we have an index and a show and for both of those we'll probably want to set those uh, messages well, actually i guess it depends on where we want to actually put this chart maybe we just create a small admin controller so let's do that i'll hit Control c to close the console and then Control l to clear it f11 to full screen we'll type rails g controller um, actually, do we have a pages controller? I think we do. Maybe we want this to be an admin controller. So yeah, let's just do this. Say Rails D controller admin, and we'll give it a dashboard. And we can go ahead and run that. 
and then we can hit control L rails S and then come back out of full screen. All right, so now we have this admin uh, controller. Let's come into the admin controller and then for the dashboard, we'll just set at messages to be equal to the message group by save that. And then we can come into our views and our uh, admin and our dashboard. And then in here, I'm just going to say something like uh, current underscore user dot role. We'll just do that. And then we can come over here to our application and go to slash admin slash dashboard. That should take us to a page. All right, so we are now on the page and we can see that this user is in fact an admin. What I'll do also is come into our nav bar and I'll just make one of these links a uh, link to a uh, admin dashboard page if we're an admin. So come into the nav bar, F11 to full screen. And I guess we'll use this disabled link. We'll change it from disabled. We'll then uh, just use the nav link as the class. So we'll get rid of this. Say link to admin, which will take us to the admin underscore dashboard underscore path with a class of nav dash link. And then we want to do this if current underscore user and dot uh, is admin or just maybe admin question mark, I'm not sure. We'll just go ahead and try this and see. So that might work. Let's do a control shift N, come over here and go to localhost port 3000. And we don't have the link. So yes, that is only working if we're an admin. Let me log into a non-admin. So I'll say john at do.com with a password of password. And they don't have the admin link and we can see that John is a regular user. If I come over here to the home page, click start chatting and go into a chat with John, I might be able, oops, I might be able to do something like um, slash role and we can say John and make him an admin. And now if we come over here and we refresh, we can see John's an admin and he now has that admin button there. And then I can come back over here and just do another slash role for John and make him just a regular user and now we'll refresh and it's gone. So that seems to be working. So now let's come into our admin page and let's uh, do some stuff in here. So we can do the admin controller and we can say before underscore action, check if this is a uh, is admin, maybe is admin question mark. And let's see if we actually have that in here. So I'm gonna do control shift F and search for is underscore admin. And we do have a before action, but it doesn't look like we have a method for that. So maybe what we do for now is we'll just leave it in the dashboard because uh, what's that rule of threes? You implement it the first time and then the second time, if you don't have it, you wince and then the third time you refactor. So let's just do our first check here. So we'll just check if the current, uh, if uh, return, if current underscore user and dot admin. And then instead of if we need this to be unless because we're trying to negate it. So we'll return if the current user is not an admin. So that works, I think. Uh, we can check, we'll hit Control Shift N and then we'll just grab this URL, paste it in here and see where it takes us. So that clearly it doesn't like it because it's trying to render the current user dot role. So that's kind of not great. Let's get rid of that and just see if that is a bug with the page loading before we get redirected. It is not. So there's something wrong with my logic here. So let's just do this. Let's check if the current user is an admin and then we'll also ch uh, return if uh, there is no current user. So we'll do a return unless current underscore user. That should handle both of our cases there. And now if we try to visit the dashboard page. Okay, so what we actually wanna do here, we don't want to do a return. What we wanna do is just say um, if and then we can do this check for the current, oops, current underscore user and admin. If this, then we just want to uh, continue. If this is not the case, then we want to uh, else redirect underscore to the root underscore path. And then we'll just type end. And now let's grab this path again, control shift N, paste it in. And now it takes us to the home page. I have to be honest, I don't know if this is funny or sad, but I just realized this while editing. 
this actually won't work. We need to set the messages this month to be self.messages this month inside of the messages.rb. And the reason why we're doing that is because we have to come into our messages controller. No, our admin controller. Uh, and instead of having this long string here with uh, the exact same thing that we just made a method for, we should probably just call message.messages this month. <laughs> and then when we actually use the message we just wrote, again, I'm making this at five in the morning, so I do apologize. But if we actually use that method, uh, we then get the same functionality, but we're actually using a method instead of just duplicating code for no reason because I'm tired. Yeah, that's it right here is just editing Dean, you know, explaining that I, I missed this. So let's go back to the actual tutorial. If you see any, any of the other code, uh, I apologize. Uh, just just go with what I just showed you. Don't go with what I was doing in the video. So that seems to be working. Let me just log in with John at doe.com with a password of password, and then we'll paste it in again, and it's still taking us to the home page. If I try to access it on an admin account, it works just fine. So this is our overall code here. Uh, if we are a current user and we are an admin, we're good. Otherwise, we redirect to the root path. I don't know why I thought it was return. Let's come into our, uh, where is it? Our dashboard now, and let's try to render this out. So we have our at messages. We'll grab the at messages and then in our dashboard, let's just do a uh, percent equals debug for the at messages. We'll save that, come over here and we'll refresh the page. And now we can see all of our messages on the screen here. Let me scroll in a bit to 150. So we have our messages, let's try and chart this. We can get rid of the debug and instead let's do a, I don't know, bar chart or I guess a column chart maybe, column underscore chart for the at messages. And now if we save that, we now have our chart displaying the messages being generated on each day. Uh, the other option we could use is maybe we want a uh, line chart. We'll save that. The line chart has a couple different uh, points here. Maybe instead we want to use a area chart and we can save that. So, I mean, it really depends what you want. I think area chart here probably looks the best uh, just because it has a certain amount of data points, but let's go ahead and let's wrap this in a dot container, make it look a little bit better and then save that, refresh. And maybe we want a little bit of margin top. So we'll do an MT-5 just to pop it down a bit. And then we'll just check for the, uh, or we'll say this is an admin page and then we'll make this line right here a H three maybe, where we just say uh, daily messages. And then we can go ahead and close this H3 and refresh and there we go. Maybe we want this to be like H5. H5 might be a bit better, something like that. Refresh, there we go, looks a little bit, little bit better. And we have our messages here. So yeah, this is just a pretty quick way to set something up that, um, sort of gives you some daily analytics where if people are constantly messaging, uh, you can then see like what your activity is in your application. Uh, in this case, it's a lot easier. In other cases, you would need to like do your views or something. So like in the case of the uh, Linktree course where we have, let me just full screen this. So in the case of my Linktree course, if I uh, take a look at it, I don't know if I have the previews up here. I probably don't. So let me go ahead and sign in. So here we have one of the lessons in the uh, Linktree course. And here what I'm doing is I'm generating a Hoy events. And then based on those events, I then check if the uh, like the view event, I think is the desktop or the or a mobile device. So you could do something similar. We covered it on the channel before with uh, views. And I think I have one like down here. And the basic idea is, if I mute this so I don't have to hear myself, uh, as you generate these daily views, you can then group them by day or these view events. And these events have a whole bunch of different data, like the mobile device, desktop, whatever. In this case, I'm just grabbing the number of those events and then I'm plotting it. I'm not using the chart kick, but here I'm using a different charting library because it has a couple more features that I like. Um, but yeah, so if you wanted to do it with views, you have to do it through like a event system or just create extra models, which gives you a little bit of overhead. 
In this case, because we just have a chat application where people are messaging all the time, uh, really all we have to do is group by the day that the messages were created at or whatever our uh, event is and we're pretty much set. So we don't have to do any extra logic where we add in a view event to each message uh, unless you want to. So it's a little bit easier to use this way. Uh, but yeah, so this is, I mean, pretty basic. There are tutorials on the channel. I'll link to them in the video description that cover more charting. I uh, also have a link to the Linktree course if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, I've covered this a few times. I just thought it'd be neat to see uh, sort of what it's like to implement this uh, in a live session with uh, uh, the chat room application. But yeah, that's going to do it for me. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.